In this video series, we will be discussing refrigeration. Specifically, in this video, we will explore the construction and working of a thermostatic expansion valve, or TXV for short. The function of a TXV is to precisely control the amount of refrigerant entering the evaporator based on the superheat at evaporator outlet. When you think of a TXV, this model might come to mind. It is commonly featured in videos and presentations. If you are a seafarer, you might have even encountered this type of design in the provision rooms aboard ships. Typically, these TXVs are used in systems with cooling capacities of up to 20 kW. However, the TXV we are focusing on today is a bit different. It is from the accommodation air conditioning system of a large cargo ship and is designed for cooling capacities of up to 180 kW. But the working principle is the same. Let us take a closer look at its construction. In this exploded view, you will notice that TXV is composed of three main components. Thermostatic element, orifice assembly and valve body. On the left, you can see the parameters based on which each component is selected. Let us take a closer look at the components that make up the thermostatic element. This includes a superheat setting spindle with a gland arrangement which we will explore in more detail later in the video as well as a connection for the equalizing line. This line is connected to the outlet of the evaporator. The equalizing line allows the pressure from the evaporator outlet to travel back to the TXV. Take a note of the vertical slots in the body of the thermostatic element. We will revisit the function later. Now, let's talk about the sensing bulb. This is a hollow tube filled with refrigerant attached to the cover via a capillary tube. The pressure from the bulb travels through the capillary tube and acts on top of the diaphragm causing it to flex and push the thrust piece downward. At the same time, pressure from the equalizing line acts below the thrust piece pushing it upward. It is important to note the distinct roles of the equalizing line and the sensing valve. While the equalizing line is connected directly to the evaporator outlet to sense pressure, the sensing bulb is only in physical contact with the evaporator outlet to detect the temperature of the refrigerant gas flowing through. Simply put, the orifice assembly is a spring-loaded valve that regulates the flow of refrigerant. When enough force is exerted on the spindle to overcome the spring force, the valve opens, allowing the refrigerant to flow. The entire assembly is secured using a cotter arrangement. Additionally, a gland arrangement prevents refrigerant from leaking through the spindle bore, while packing seals are used to ensure a tight seal and prevent leaks. Here, you can see the individual components that make up the orifice assembly. The lower spring seat is mounted on the threaded section of the superheat adjustment gear, enabling it to move up or down when turned. If the spring seat is constrained from turning while the gear is turned, the seat moves along the threaded section. This motion is guided and the rotational movement is constrained by the slots in the body of the thermostatic element. The valve body is a simple component with threaded holes to mount all the other components together. Once the assembly is complete, notice how the tiny gear on the spindle meshes with the superheat adjustment gear and how the wings on the lower spring seat fit into the slots in the valve body. These slots constrain the spring seat's rotational motion, allowing only linear movement as seen earlier. When the operator turns the spindle, the spring seat moves up or down depending on the direction of rotation. This movement adjusts the tension on the spring. Increasing the spring tension reduces the valve opening for the same force exerted by the refrigerant gas on the diaphragm. As a result, less refrigerant flows and the superheat at evaporator outlet increases. Decreasing the spring tension has the opposite effect. 
increasing refrigerant flow and reducing the superheat. The sensing bulb is in contact with the evaporator outlet where superheated refrigerant is flowing. This causes the pressure inside the bulb to rise, exerting an opening force on top of the spindle through the diaphragm. The equalizing line pressure and the spring force exert a closing force on the spindle. The final portion of the spindle is determined by the balance of these forces. The force from the sensing bulb pressure on the diaphragm equals combined spring force and equalizing line pressure. In the next part of this video series, we'll explore how the refrigerant flows through the evaporator and undergoes phase change. We will also break down key concepts like superheat and the purpose of the equalizing line, complete with animations to make these topics easier to understand. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.